I'm Antonio Sala. In this video, we are going to discuss prediction in nonlinear dynamic systems with a method called extended Kalman filter. In linear processes, there is a famous best prediction formula which obtains the minimum variance state estimate given a sequence of measurements. That formula is the widely used Kalman filter, but in many cases, the model is nonlinear. So the first approach to deal with the nonlinear case, it's a linearization one around the estimated trajectories that's called extended Kalman filter. And understanding the algorithm is the main goal of this video. Let's start by reviewing the linear time invariant Kalman filter. If we have this state and output equations, corrupted by noise, this will be process noise, this will be measurement noise, you will be a deterministic input, known. We will assume that the variance of the process noise, capital W, is known, as well as the variance matrix, capital V, of the measurement noise. Standard assumptions are that process and measurement noise are not correlated with anything else. So when we have this linear time invariant system, Kalman filter equations are the following ones. We have a propagation of expected value, propagation of means, in which if we are at time instant k, and we computed our variance estimate after the previous measurement, whatever it will be, okay, then this expression updates the variance accumulating process noise and multiplying by a squared because the variance is the mean of x squared. Okay, so this is standard variance equations. So this sigma xk is the estimated variance before measuring yk. And then the best linear prediction of the state given a measurement is the standard formula covariance times the inverse of the variance of the information I have, which is the sensor. So this is the covariance. This is the variance of the measurement before actually observing it. So this factor is the observer gain, Kalman gain. And then we update our open loop prediction in mean with this correction term, which is the observer gain times the difference between what I measure minus what the model predicted. So this innovation multiplied by the observer gain is used to update my prediction. So I get the new expected value of my process state. This is an observer with time varying gain. Also, the variance update equation is as follows. The variance after previous measurement multiplied by a, a transposed plus the noise accumulation during one sample did get me my variance before measuring yk output at instant k, and then covariance inverse of information variance covariance transposed is the uncertainty reduction I can achieve thanks to my measurement. Replacing covariance and the variance of the information with the actual expressions for a linear process, we get the expression in the brown square regarding the variance update after measurement. So then I I have the variance of k after measurement, and I can just propagate to the next instant with this formula, predict and correct the mean, and update the variance and implement that recursively as long as I keep getting samples. So this is the non-stationary Kalman filter. It's also widely known that in most cases, after a handful of samples, the variance equation converges, and this matrix ends up being equal to this one. And also the observer gain will be constant. So in most linear implementations, MATLAB's DLQE, or what's called H2 control, which implements a stationary common filter inside. So if the, my process is linear time invariant, then there is not much to gain from implementing this, except in the first samples. So basically, in the linear time invariant case, most implementations are just 
stationary linear time invariant Kalman filter produced by that command. However, that will not be the case in a nonlinear setup, which is the main goal of this video. Let us now start with that nonlinear process. In this case, our state equations will be nonlinear. Again, x state, u, known deterministic input, process noise, measurement noise, v, nonlinear sensor, nonlinear dynamics. Okay, so it's just a more general case of state transition and measurement equation than this linear one, but the variables are exactly the same. Good, so if we have the system, how can we estimate the state? Well, let us hope that the true plant state is close to my estimated state, which is hat x k. Let us to hope that the amplitude of the process noise is not too big. Then the true value of the next state can be approximated by the linearization, the first order Taylor series as follows. This will be the prediction based only on the mean, assuming no noise, but we will add the Jacobian matrix, the partial derivative of f with respect to x at the known operating point, which is my present state estimation, my known deterministic input, and my prediction that the noise is zero mean, so it will be something close to zero. So taking partial derivatives of that function at that point, I will name it a of hat x k u k, then this Jacobian multiplied by the increment, the difference between the true state and the estimated state, well, that will be one further step in approximating this, and of course, the same Jacobian with respect to the process noise, multiplied by the increment of the actual noise, minus zero, the expected value of it, then all of this will be the linearized approximation of the true dynamics. Of course, the problem of this is that this true state is unknown and the noise is also unknown. We only know its variance. Okay, now if I move this thing to the other side, I will call that epsilon k plus one. Looked at the difference between lowercase e and epsilon, okay? This lowercase e will be assumed to be the actual error after swallowing measurement yk, but epsilon will be the propagation of that error one step ahead. The actual difference between the true unknown plant state at next state minus my open loop prediction bar x. Bar x will be prior to measuring hat x will be after measuring. It's just like this, something that will need to be corrected with something similar to this. So moving this there, that difference will be epsilon, and then this thing will be this Jacobian A multiplied by the error plus some capital J multiplied by the actual noise. I know capital A and capital J because they depend on my running state estimate and my known deterministic manipulated input. I know the matrices, but I don't know the things that multiply those matrices. But okay, no problem for the camera filter. We'll see. So now if E is a random variable, assuming that I know its uncertainty, its variance with this sigma k posteriori, and I know the variance of the process noise, then the variance of this epsilon can be shown to be this is epsilon, this is epsilon transposed, and making operations, I will have these two terms, which are the important one, plus some products of E and uh, process noise. And as the process noise is assumed white noise not correlated with anything else, the expectation of those products will be zero. This is the only thing that will remain, and that results in the equation down here. So this will be the one step ahead open loop propagation of variance, which is the analogous to this one step ahead propagation in the linear time invariant case. Now let us consider 
the measurement equation. Now I will also make a linearization assuming that the two state will be somehow close to the open loop mean prediction. In that case, assuming that measurement noise will be hopefully close to zero, this will be the expected value of the measurement plus some Jacobian with respect to state multiplied by the increments, the difference between the true state minus my prediction, which is epsilon, plus another Jacobian of this thing with respect to the measurement noise multiplied by the measurement noise. So as before, if I move this thing to the other side, the actual difference between what I will measure and what my model expects to be measured will approximately be C k plus 1, epsilon k plus 1, plus r k plus 1, v k plus 1, and just carrying out a similar procedure to this equation, we expect this thing to be zero mean because v is zero mean and this error, hopefully, if we propagate correctly, will be zero mean with this variant c sigma z transpose plus r v r which generalized to the nonlinear case. This fragment, the variance of this innovation before taking the actual measurement. You know, if I had some additive noise, then this will be actually one identity. Okay, the only left thing will be the covariance and, well, the variance of epsilon multiplied by c will approximate the covariance between epsilon and the measurement. So this is the exact analog to this thing in the linear camera filter. So we are in conditions to state the modified, the extended camera filter algorithm with the new expressions for the variance of the innovation and the covariance. So we will start with some initial mean and variance equations and we will iterate when I have the first measurement, I will correct my prior estimate with this covariance times inverse of variance multiplied by the innovation, the difference between their true actual measurement from the process minus the expected measurement from my model. And I will get the a posteriori expected value, corrected mean, hat x, and from my prior variance estimate and this covariance times inverse of innovation variance times covariance transposed will give me the information gain obtained from that measurement, the reduction of uncertainty. This CK and RK actually stand for the Jacobian matrices C and R here and here. So with that I will have my corrected estimate after taking measurement YK. So now the next step will be the open loop prediction of next state, propagating the mean through my model to get the open loop prediction of the mean and propagating the variance time instant k after the measurement with this expression to get the variance at time instant k plus one before the measurement. I end up having bar x and sigma just like this once in the first iteration that were invented so that I can go back to step one and with that bar x and sigma evaluate the correction step after the measurement and then propagate to the next sample and so on, so on, so on. In this prediction step, this a, k, g, k stand for those Jacobian matrices we discussed here and here. So this is the extended gamma filter algorithm that takes true measurements and simulations with the known deterministic input and updates my state estimate at x. In fact, basically these are the common filter for a linear time varying process, but the nonlinear extension approximates the nonlinear dynamics by a linear time varying one in what is called linearization around the estimated trajectory. So let us summarize and conclude. In this video, we have approximated a nonlinear discrete time process by its linearization around the estimated state trajectory. That linearization allows 
us to set up approximations of the stochastic mean, variance and covariance equation. And at the end, we have an algorithm in which the constant matrices in a linear time invariant common filter are replaced by time varying because as the state moves, the Jacobians will be different. So they are replaced by time varying model matrices. At the end, the Kalman filter formulas are exactly the same as in the linear case, just with time varying model matrices. It's important to note that the stationary Kalman filter DLQE in MATLAB, well, in a linear case, it's just meaningless because if these matrices change in the linear case, this happened after a handful of iterations, but in this case, we do not expect this equality to happen. So this will be false in most of the iterations. So stationary filter is meaningless, but the non-stationary ones are the famous extended gamma filter, and they are reasonably accurate for smooth nonlinearities. I mean, almost linear things, small Hessian, if my initial estimate is also close to the true process and noise amplitudes are somehow small. But with initial estimates far away from the true process state or very nonlinear things, this observer is no longer optimal and it can be even unstable. No guarantee that this thing will work. And it's widely used in practice. Most of the times it works but don't bet it for sure. In order to overcome some of the drawbacks, there are some other options. The most famous ones are the unscented Kalman filter and the particle filters. But of course, those are not the objective of this video. So we will conclude here. Thanks for watching.